I want to talk a little bit about spotted lanternfly. I know you guys have heard me talk about um, spotted lanternfly before, um, but I want to make sure that maybe if you haven't attended um, this meeting before, that um, you are aware of this invasive species. So um, it's important, uh, spotted lanternfly, as you can see in the photo of the adult, um, is a plant topper and it's about one inch in length. So it's a pretty good size um, insect, very noticeable. Um, and it's native to Northern China. It was first found in the United States in Pennsylvania in 2014. Um, and it has since been documented in 14 states. Most of them are Midwest to East Coast states. Um, so you have New York, Delaware, New Jersey, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, North Carolina, Ohio, Kansas, Indiana. Um, and so the host range is why this again is an invasive species. This is not native to the US. Um, and so currently we know that it has over 103 plant species with at least four of those are occurring, sorry, 40 of those occurring in North America. Um, now this is where we're concerned about it is that um, hosts include grapevines. So, but beyond grapevines, cause I know that some uh, attendees work with other crops outside of vineyards. Um, there's stone fruit, apple, cherry, blueberry, figs, hops, oak, black walnut, ash, beech, maples, hickory, poplar, uh, black cherry, willows, and woody ornamentals. Um, so there's quite a range um, of host species for this insect. Um, the preferred host is Tree of Heaven, which is also an invasive um, plant, um, and grapevines. So these are the two preferred hosts. Now, uh, populations can um, uh, increase in such large numbers on grapevines that it ha um, this insect has been shown to be able to cause vine death, which very few things can cause, few insects can cause vine death. So this is where it is a big concern um, of this insect arriving here in California and also just here in the counties that you work in. Um, so the photo you see on the right is what aggregation looks like. Um, this not, and these are all um, adult spotted lanternflies that you see on this side of the tree in an urban area. Um, so very similar to like brown marmorated sink bug where they aggregate in large numbers in urban areas and then move into agriculture come spring. Um, you can see that also with spotted lanternfly, that same type of behavior. Um, if you can imagine these insects are an inch long, they are a pretty decent sized insect um, and they produce a copious amount of honeydew. Um, so um, some of the behaviors uh, that are interesting is that uh, if you're walking up to an area that has a spotted lanternfly in large numbers or did have spotted la um, lanternfly in large numbers, that honeydew starts to ferment and there's a, um, they, they say there's a fermentation type of smell um, around the area in which they're at. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, it's, they're found in, Agriculture are wooded and urban areas, so it's a wide range. Um, so it's not just in grapevines. Um, and they have the potential to severely harm grapes, orchards, and logging industries um, in California um, and in the US. They may lower the crop yields, increase crop uh, um, the production costs, and cause trade disruptions. With um, countries that don't have spotted lanternfly, if this insect were to get into California and into vineyards, our exporting of fruit um, and specifically grapes, exporting for like table grapes could be disrupted along with other crops that are being exported out of the US. Um, so this is why we're concerned about it. <laughs> Um, California has established a quarantine to prohibit the introduction of spotted lanternfly into California. So items in which um, the eggs um, could be laid on and also the nymphs or adults could be feeding on 
are um, quarantined out of California. Um, and just recently, uh, at Truckee, uh, a CDFA uh, truck stop in, in Truckee where they do an inspections, um, they stopped a truck carrying a load of firewood from the East Coast that was trying to enter into California that had spotted lanternfly eggs on them. Um, so they've con obviously confiscated that wood and it's been destroyed. But the point is, is that it's that easy to be able, if they hadn't have caught it, that could have brought this insect into California. Um, they've also found multiple dead um, specimens in cargo planes, in the hulls of cargo planes. Um, so this is something, there's multiple ways that this insect can get in and be transported into California. Um, so everyone has a responsibility. Um, and for us in the wine industry, our responsibility is to learn how to identify the insect so that if it were to get here, that we would be able to identify it quickly um, and then have a response. Um, and so that's what I am gonna try to do uh, to show you what, what are we looking for? What are we looking at? So spotted lanternfly eggs, um, on the left-hand side you see here, underneath you have these rows of eggs that are laid and above, um, over the top of those eggs, um, the female covers them with a yellowish brown waxy deposit. And as you can see against a tree surface, you see something there, but it's not very noticeable as eggs because it's all covered. So this is what it can look like. Um, and then when that waxy covering were to come off, you actually see the individual eggs. Um, you can see these exit holes. This is where spotted lanternfly nymph had emerged from those eggs. Um, so each female can lay one to two egg masses of 30 to 50 eggs each. Um, and again, these are covered in that waxy deposit. And they're laid on smooth tree surfaces, inanimate objects such as telephone poles, stones, pallets, outdoor furniture, railway cars, firewood, vehicles, etc. So this is one of the reasons why it's such a, a big concern is that the laying of eggs on inanimate objects means that it um, can easily be introduced into new areas unbeknownst to the person moving the items. Um, so like outdoor furniture, moving, if you're moving across state lines, you can easily be moving eggs um, into uh, a new area where it's not um, currently established. And then again, railway cars that go across the US, um, they can lay their eggs on the side of them and then, you know, they emerge wherever they emerge, if it's a um, hospitable area, they could establish themselves. So this is one of the biggest um, concerns about this insect specifically, um, is the laying on non-plant items. So you saw the eggs, and um, now there are four immature stages, we call those instars. So the four immature stages, the first three um, look like the photo on the left. It's like a waxy black with white little polka dots pretty much, speckles. Um, and so these, um, these stages, they each stage, they molt, they get a little bit larger and they molt, they get a little larger. Um, so the first through third um, stage are black and white like the left. And the last stage, which is the fourth in star, you have bright red coloration with, again, the black and white spots. This is a very noticeable insect. Uh, it's very different than what we have. Um, it is, uh, I think, striking. So it is something to keep in mind um, to educate everyone that's working in the fields of looking for something that looks like this. Um, because it is likely the people working in the fields um, at any level, which will be the first, first person to find um, this insect if it were to arrive in California. Now, this is what it looks like um, out in nature. This photo, the third photo here, you can see the lions of eggs without the waxy deposit. 
And over here, you see a wacky, waxy deposit that's been cracked um, that's over another set of eggs. And here are nymphs that are somewhere between the first to third instar because they're black and white. Um, the photo on the right, you can see again, this is what they look like, black and white spotted. And then over here, the second photo, you see uh, the fourth instar, which has red with black and white. And then uh, the, the, the photo on the far left, you're looking at immature stages, probably third and, and fourth instar. So this is fourth, and these are probably third since they're, they're together. And here are some photos of what um, spotted lanternfly looks like. Um, the adults and, and the fourth instars are side by side. Um, the adult spotted lanternfly, the four wings, the wings in the front, cover their body when they're at rest. Um, so you don't see the bright red here that's um, in the hind wing that's tucked underneath. Now, this insect, when you come up on it, if it feels threatened, it will flutter its wings forward and it will show you this bright red hind wing. Red in insects is um, against predators, against uh, not other insect predators. They don't see the color red, but we see the color red um, and animals see their color red. Um, and so this is to prevent predation uh, from uh, other other predators. So they will flutter their wings forward, showing you displaying the red as a caution. So what I think that this insect often could be easily uh, confused with is uh, a moth. You know, like, oh, look at that colorful moth. Um, there are features that, that distinguish it from being a moth, but I can see how someone might at first think it is. Um, especially, you know, a lot of moths are colorful um, and do have pretty patterns on the wings. And this is definitely a pretty uh, colorful insect. Um, so just wanted to take those few minutes um, to cover some of um, what we're looking at um, for spotted lanternfly since we had a few minutes. And we do want to preserve our continuing education units. Um, and now I am going to stop and we're